and welcome to Roselle and Friends Talk Show. Today's guest is among our musical giants of the black British musical heritage. Homegrown, born here in the UK, we look now at how the influence of our musical icons have influenced the younger generation and who have histories and stories to tell. Our guest today is Motown artist for 15 years, singer, songwriter, and jazz artist. None other than Tahira Juma. Tahira, welcome. Lovely to meet you. Yes, and you likewise. Right, so Tahira, you're born here in the UK. Um, tell us a little bit about your background. Okay, as you said, I was born here. Um, I've lived here for most of my young life. Mm -hmm. um, you're still young. Yes, for most of my youth, <laughs> I was right here, it. whilst I was still attending school. Yes. I left at uh, 15 and went to the US. Mm -hmm. I was in Washington, Fort Washington, right, yes. uh, for a good number of my musical years, right. but we'll get back to that. Mm -hmm. um, as I was growing up here, I basically only really heard jazz and a little bit of the old style reggae, you know, Desmond Decker, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, I was listening to jazz all the time, thinking that's what everybody was listening to. Right. I so had no idea. Who's the cause of that? It was actually my stepfather. Right. Okay. <laughs> Family influence. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so what, what did he listen to? He listened to Count Basie, mm -hmm. Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, Nina Simone. Right. The greats. Absolutely, really. yes. The greats of yes. jazz is what he so listened to. So that was to. your musical diet. Yeah. yeah. Right. And how has that influenced you? Well, as a small child, you know, in a Caribbean household, you're not allowed to touch the stereo, right? That's right. <laughs> Don't go well, into that room. Chris, it, I wasn't allowed in the room except to dust it. <laughs> I remember well. So anyway, I'd plan my dusting expeditions as he was going out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I can remember clearly being just five yes. and tiptoeing to the stereo because I'd watched him. Yes. And turning it on. Right. And putting on all the records that I had watched him play. And I had to learn how to do every lick. I had no idea... I wasn't supposed to be able to do the male part. I had no idea I wasn't supposed to be do, able to do the really high parts. No clue. I was just fascinated by these sounds I heard. But mm -hmm. as, as young as I was, they put emotions in me that I right. didn't understand. Right, you know? yes, yes. And um, I was there every day, playing, playing, playing. Mm -hmm. I knew exactly when he would come in. Kept an eye on the street. Right. <laughs> Duster in hand. That was your apprenticing. Uh-huh. Right. And... Um, so as a result, I've got a five and a half octave voice, which is pretty wide. Wow, um, amazing. Um, but I didn't know. Uh, accident of nature and practice and nurture. Right, well, I mean, obviously that was meant to happen because you've gone on to not only listen to that and imitate it, yeah. but, you know, have made a career out of that. Correct. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that journey, that journey that you've made. Okay, um... I came out of school, well actually whilst I was still in school, I was supposed to be apprenticed to uh, a very famous jazz band at the time, which mm -hmm. was the Cleo Lane Orchestra. Oh yes, Cleo Lane. Um, I was about 13, 14, and mm -hmm. my music teacher, for the first time, I was very shy, they used to call me bookworm, I read <laughs> still prolifically. That's good, keep reading, I like it. <laughs> and um, my music teacher heard me singing, I was walking along the hall mm. and he couldn't believe what he was hearing. Right. So he had me come along and do scales. And when he realized how I sang, mm -hmm. he insisted on searching on his own time right. to get me an apprenticeship with the Cleo Lane Orchestra. That's what I like, teachers who take that initiative and push you. Yes. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, we all need that push, don't we? That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, he got me the apprenticeship. Everything was fine. Wow. My mother decided I should be a secretary. Right. <laughs> Music is not a career. Precisely. Okay. So she said no. I was devastated of because yes, that was the passion wasn't yeah. in that. Well, mm. anybody who knows a tiny bit about my personality knows I couldn't be someone's secretary. I'd be directing him. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's so, what I like. Someone who takes the bull by the horn. There yes, you go. Sixth initiative. So that Leadership wasn't skills. successful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So I was devastated. I did all the things, passed all the touch typing, did all the boring right, stuff. Yes, yes. 
knew how to collate this file. Oh, it's so boring. I couldn't even bear it. But yeah. it kind of has helped me with music because I can compartmentalise. There were skills. You yes. were developing skills. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unknowingly, real, I didn't realise it would help yes, in yes. my musical career. It all helps. Um, like I said, I left, I went to the States, came back here mm -hmm. and decided to get a job. Right. You know, um, I did not know the first thing about getting into music, didn't know any other musicians here. Right. Knew no one. And um, I decided to walk into this place. I saw this studio in North Acton. Mm -hmm. And I walked in, just, you know, no clue. It just said studio, recording studio. So right. I went in and um, saw this guy called Rick Kassman in there. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, I can sing, I want to be a singer. Right, yes. That's um, boldness, I like it. There you go. <laughs> and um, what have you got for me? And he was like, looking around at his uh, other guys. Surprised by the bonus. <laughs> yeah, probably. Bold yeah. over by the bonus. <laughs> I could do so many different things. So mm -hmm. I became his resident session singer. Okay, right. So anybody that came along, I worked for Glenn Goldsmith. I worked for quite a few mm -hmm. artists that were out there at the time. Right. Doing okay. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Really, really enjoyed it. I did from rock to reggae yes. to pop. Very eclectic. Yes. Rhythm and blues. House to disco to rhythm and blues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did everything. Yes. And uh, it was a good training ground because those kind of music, though I'd kind of heard them in passing, they weren't things that I was directly involved in because right. I really had a love for jazz. Right, right. And um, R&B. Of course. So yes. when I started to get into those things, I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I can use my voice like this, you know? Right. So um, you ended up being oh, um, Diana Ross in the Black Music Hall of Fame. Yeah. Tell us about that. Fascinating. Um, it's, um, Heroes in the Hall of Fame. Yes. Black yes. Heroes. Black Heroes in the Hall of Fame. Yes. Um, funnily enough, I, on my musical journey, like I said, I was a session singer. I mm -hmm. went, I don't know, when you're in this kind of, hot house of like always recording. Yeah. You meet other singers, they bring people in to help speed yes. up the process. Um, I had no idea, um, you know, of prices. They just let me charge what I wanted. So I was charging 650. Wow. I had no clue yes. for half an hour's work. They gave it to but you. But I was fast. Yeah, they gave it to me. Wonderful. <laughs> they wrote contracts out by hand. <laughs> You should have asked for more. <laughs> Had I known, I was going on stage, I was doing performances, getting a mm -hmm. thousand for three songs. Right. I did not know. Mm -hmm. I just did what I thought I was supposed to do. Yeah. I met loads of other singers and I decided to go into a band with five other girls. Right. Um, I went on stage, I started singing with them. And some guy, they didn't explain the gig to me properly. I wasn't really mm. sure of the remit. But apparently it was like a showcase. You go and you oh. do showcases, okay. mm -hmm. and then you get work for the whole of that year. Okay. I had no clue. They didn't tell me. They just said, oh, we're going to do singing here. So I went, and this guy called um, Terry West approached me and said, oh, oh, love, I really like you. <laughs> That's how he spoke. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, you, you're a dead ringer for Diana Ross. And I said, would you, would you join my Supremes band? And I'm mm. wondering... Diana Ross and he wants me to join Supreme's band. I shouldn't confess it, but I did not know no. who the Supremes were. <laughs> I find that fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, uh, not really. Uh, I don't think I like it. Uh, mm -hmm. I had no clue what I was declining. And yeah. then he told me how much I was going to be earning each gig. Yeah. And he, he was like, you're going to be doing like four gigs, perhaps a week, maybe, you know, a bit more. And I was like, really? Motivation. <laughs> Precisely. So um, I said, uh, okay, let me have the sound of the music. I still didn't know who they were until I heard Touch Me in the Morning. Of course, yes. Then I was like, okay, it's that band. Well, you know, his accent. I put it down to his accent. Uh, why right. I didn't know who they were. <laughs> I didn't really like planning everything, doing everything all by myself to do mm -hmm. to somebody else. Yes, it was, yes. It was the thing was being somebody else. And um, I was going out, still depping, still sessioning. Mm. And Lascelles actually approached me, this guy called Lascelles James. Yes, yes, I know him. Wonderful sax player. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he approached me to uh, come and audition for Black Heroes in the Hall of Fame. Mm. I'd never done an audition. I was like, I don't want to go to an audition. I was thinking, mm. why? What's the point? People mm. see me, they hire me, that's it. Yes, yes. So anyway, I went along. He fooled me. He said I was accompanying him. Okay. <laughs> So I went along and they said, 
oh, are you auditioning? I said, no. And they said, oh, you should audition. So anyway, I auditioned and I sang a Gladys Knight song because okay. I like Gladys Knight. Yes, yes. So I did this Gladys Knight song and they said, oh, you don't look anything like Gladys Knight. You look like Diana Ross though. Um, sing a Diana Ross song. So I sang did. Touch Me in the Morning because yes, I yes. love that song. That's one of my all time Fabulous. favorites. Yes, and yes. Um, they hired me and I ended up being the act that was closing the show all the time. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, that was an absolutely theatrical genius. But that has influenced you, though, it isn't has, it? It has, Because yes. it's made you the kind of person that you are, a very indomitable spirit, yes. very, very, very determined, independent <clears throat> in every way. And, you know, you know, it made you um, the kind of person who was able to say, right, I'm going to prioritise this or that because... That is, what, that is how I value myself. And I like that about you. I think that is awesome. Thank you. Well, look, I mean, I, I, you are a phenom phenomenal young person. And I know with, you know, the music heritage in hands like yours, the future generation safe musically. Uh -huh. So, you know, I really, really thank you for coming and telling us your story. Thank you. you know, that part of your musical journey to date. Um, you will continue to be a phenomenal person. And I thank you for coming on the show. I'll try. Really great thank having you. Thank you very much. Really great. to see yeah. you. And you're going to play for us today. I am, yes. I'm Excellent. going to uh, keep it to the jazz. Right, yes. And sing a song that has now become iconic right. for me. Okay. Something that people always request. So. so we look forward to that in a minute. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tahira. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> The Roselle and Friends Show. Hello and welcome to the Roselle and Friends Kitchen. Today in our kitchen we have uh, Joyson. Joyson who's going to cook up some extraordinary delights for us. Definitely. Um, Joyson's going to cook what? I'm cooking jerk chicken today with sweet potato fries. Mmm, hot. It's going to be hot. hot. I'm going to tame this one down just a little bit, right, just okay. so it's eatable, you know, right. I don't want to don't burn anybody's taste buds. Okay, so. jerk chicken, so because it's jerk, where is it from? Jerk actually originated um, from Jamaica. Right. Um, there's, there's two forms of jerk. Mm -hmm. You can either get a dry jerk or you can get a wet jerk. Right. So, so it does depend on how hot you want it. So when we say jerk, we're talking about the sauce or what you what's going to... Yeah, I mean, cook that chicken. Yeah, the the sauce is going to be jerk, so it's going to be it's going to be hot. It's going to be loads of peppery. flavors, very hot. peppery, very right. peppery, very hot. Okay. Right. So right, so we're going to start. We're going to start with the chicken. Um, normally, you could use a chicken breast. Okay. You probably eat three or four chicken breasts, depending on how many you're cooking for today. Okay. I'm actually going to use a leg and a thigh. thigh. Right. Only because okay. the skin takes a lot of flavour. Mm -hmm. I like the bone in I there. Like meat on so the bone is good. It. Yeah. Absolutely Plus love it. Plus the finger licking too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're going to just cut this down, it's ever so, just like this. Yep. So I've got three different bits. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're going to pop that in there. And what I'm going to do is I've got some onions, some lemon and some lime. Right. I have some thyme. Mm -hmm. I've got a little bit of ginger. Three cloves of garlic, right. which we're going to use as well. Fantastic spice, isn't it? Fantastic mm. spices, very, Caribbean. very flavorsome. Mm. And the all dangerous 
got two bonnets. Scotch bonnets. Oh, my nose. I'm only going to use three for this one. Only three? I'm only going to use three for this one. I wouldn't even use one, generally. <laughs> it's really yeah. nice flavour. So. That's why it's called jerk chicken. So what we're going to do is, we're going to do rough cuts of everything. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to cut this down just into quarters. Okay. Wait, put it to one side. The ginger, everything ginger. we're going to just rough yep. chop. Nicely peeled. Nicely yeah. peeled. Mm -hmm. Just, just a few rough cuts. Right. We're gonna leave the seeds in the Scotch bonnet. Just oh, that makes it even more fiery. Makes it even more fiery. Mm -hmm. So we'll just get the tops off. So we we'll use this. Right there. Okay. So what we do is we've got the blender in here. Okay. okay. So over. you're going to blend that now? We're going to blend everything. We're going to make a nice paste. We're not okay. going to do a dry one today. We're going to do a wet one. A wet one. one. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm from Grenada. So yes. growing up in a Caribbean household, you know, mum and my sister, they, they loved cooking, cooking. jerks. Always, I was going always to say, cooking. what a young man like you is doing, <laughs> doing all this wonderful, delightful cooking. Yeah, But mom. then, you know, you've made it a career as well. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. I have. Um, right. I'm actually currently working for a privately owned hotel in Victoria. Right, yes. Um, I like to see a man in the kitchen. Yes. We normally, in a traditional jerk, you would use brown sugar. Okay. I use white sugar. Why is that? I find brown sugar a bit a bit too much, a bit okay. too sweet. sweet. Yeah. So sweet. just one true. tablespoon right. of sugar. Mm -hmm. We're gonna use a little bit of tomato paste okay. just to take a bit of the spice away okay. from the Scotch bonnet. Yes, yes. Just a little bit. All right. Tones it down. A bit. Tones it down. Just yeah. just a tiny touch. I'm gonna use one. It's all very colourful though. All very colourful. Mm -hmm. Very very nice colours. I'm gonna use the juice. Okay. As well as, as the, the zest, yeah. Yes. Just just a little bit inside. I find I find it brings out a lot of flavour as well, mm -hmm. especially yeah. chicken and and anything citrus right. is really really amazing. Yes. Amazing yes. flavours. So and of course, in the Caribbean, you've got these naturally growing, isn't it? Naturally your lemons growing. And your limes and your. They're oranges. absolutely everywhere. Yeah. Used we, in all the dishes, isn't it? Everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely everything. Especially limes. I love limes. We give that, I love limes. I yes. find the flavour of limes very enhancing, it especially is, it with is. chicken. And yes. Gonna pop this on here like this, and we're gonna add just a tiny bit of olive oil, okay. just to kind of get you the consistency. That's gonna stay wet. It's gonna be right. nice to work with. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So just pop just a little bit in there. And that's all you really need. It's a you blender don't, of spicy goodness. That's all it mm. really is. Mm. That's all you really need. You that's don't need to terrific. take it any further. If you right. have a look, you can see it's not it's not extremely okay. Like, yes, it's yes. still got quite a bit of base to yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay? Nice and thick. So I'll just pop that in the sink over here. Okay. And we're gonna just spoon. Gonna coat that chicken in there. Yeah, we are. Mm. So you see you've got a nice red, little bit of green going yes, through yes, there. Yes, that colour is beautiful. If you smell, you can <laughs> even smell the bit of the citrus oh, coming straight through it as well. Mm. Gonna, I'm going to get my hands in there. That's Scotch the traditional, bonnets. yes. Yeah, yeah Scotch bonnets are hot, so you have to be very yes. careful with yeah. your hands. Don't touch your eyes. Definitely not, <laughs> or anywhere Where else. Where else? That's <laughs> true. What we'll do is place them nice and well. You don't need any more oil. Okay. You don't yeah, need anything else because it's already in there. The thing about using chicken with the skin on as well, it releases a lot of oil. Yes. A lot of oil. Yes, yes. Sure. Right, so now that you've got the jerk sauce on that chicken, yeah. what's going to happen? So we're actually, I didn't put any salt and pepper in the marinade. Right. The reason being, it's a lot better if you just sprinkle just a tiny bit over the top. Right, okay. It sucks it up so much more differently. And okay. that's all you need. Right. You don't need a lot of salt and pepper because you've got so much flavour inside yes. already. Yes. So we're going to pop this in the oven, okay. approximately, maybe I'd say, especially because it's on the bone, I'd say probably 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 20 minutes at max. Right. Okay. right. So in the meantime, while that's in the oven, I'm just going to move this over. We're going to start on our sweet potato, sweet potato. fries. Mm -hmm. Let's get our peel them out. Okay. And we're just... Uh, Right, so now we're gonna we're gonna just cut these down into wedges. Right. They're, they're quite small, so we're not gonna make them too tiny. We're right. just we're just gonna make them nice and right. Just cut okay. it in half. Just kind of like big kind of mm -hmm. chunky chips. Chips, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Especially the chicken's gonna be so hot as okay. well. So you need a lot of that to soak up. You that. need a lot of it to <laughs> soak it up. So we'll just cut these down really quickly. Nice and easy, just into threes. Nice big chips. Yep. So we're going to pop them in there, and we're going to boil these for about maybe three minutes. Three minutes. That's all you need. Okay. To. 
So after they've been boiled, you, you can see they're not they're not yes. overboiled. They're just nice and, nice firm. and firm. So yes, you still yes. got quite a lot of flavour. Yes, yes, because so they gonna, can be overcooked. They can be around. overcooked. Mm. You'll end up with mashed potato. That's right. That's mm. it. So we're going to pop them over here in the fryer. Okay. Right. So now we're going to get the chicken out of the oven. Right. And as you can see, mm. it has absolutely Beautiful. amazing colour. That looks rich and deli oh, delicious. The, the little bit, mm, yeah. it, it's not burnt. It's more flavour than it is anything oh, else. Right. Yes, okay? yes, yes. So, if we grab a plate, so what we're going to do is we're going to, we're just going to wait for our sweet potato fries. We're just going to put this orange down. Yes. We're going to make a nice garnish, a nice garnish wow. just to go with it. Mm -hmm. oh, that, looks, that looks good. So, that looks good. I'm gonna pop this in here like that. And with the chicken, you can start with the fries. Beautiful, rich colour there, isn't it? Beautiful, rich. You can still smell all the citrus. Mm -hmm. The scotch bonnets are coming yes. through, the thyme. Yes, yes. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely Beautiful. amazing. Right. So, we're gonna grab our sweet potato fries. Over here. Ooh, nice and cooked. Yes. I've actually cooked these in olive oil as opposed olive to vegetable oil. oil. Yeah. Okay. I find yeah. vegetable oil kind of takes flavour away. Anything oh. you cook in, in vegetable oil, the vegetable oil drains the flavour. Uh -huh. It's just not the same. Okay. Olive oil only reaches a certain temperature and it keeps all your flavour inside. It only reaches a certain temperature. It won't go anything over 120. Okay, well that's interesting. So, in a way, your, your food remains whole and uh, undestroyed by Absolutely the, undestroyed. the terror of the, the oil heat. The terror of the oil. Oh. Get them on. Uh, and then just to finish everything off, I'm actually going to slice the scotch bonnet. You're bringing bonnet. back the scotch bonnet. I'm bringing back the scotch oh bonnet. It's just nice, lovely colours on the plate. There's and no mistaking that this is a hot <laughs> it's dish. It's going to be a hot dish. Lovely spring Look at that. Time. Look at that. And here delightful. we have jerk chicken, Absolutely sweet potato fries. Delightful. So this is the moment of truth. I'm going to taste it. Beautiful, succulent chicken. Nice and firm. And Tell me what you think. Spicy. Delicious. Hot. Definitely hot. But not too hot. No, that's, that's not the thing. Not too hot. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised. I thought it would be hot, but this is manageable. And... Yes. The citrus and the tomato, so it mm. takes it away. Yes. So you still get the heat, Beautiful. but you get all the flavors. The blend come of through. that spice comes through. Joyson, that was culinary magic. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming on this show. Thanks for having and me. I'm sure everyone will agree that that looks absolutely superb. It's going to be hot. Comes with a heat warning. Definitely. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> does. Okay. So thank you. And now we go over to the gym. Hi, my name's Cyrus. As you can see, we're in the gym again. Um, I'm going to go through a few more exercises, show you guys a few more exercises, then we're going to talk a little bit about diet. Alright, so I just warmed up. Okay, alright. When you're doing bench press, flat bench, the best thing to do is start with a light weight. Don't start stupid heavy. Yeah. When you come, if you get the bar, you can come down nice and slow, like this. You stop just about a centimetre above your chest and you come all the way up and you squeeze, you tense your chest. Yeah. It's a squeezing that is concentrates the muscles, so it's guaranteed to use the muscles, it's guaranteed to work. Can't go wrong. Okay, um, I'm going to show you a bit of cables. Cables are good because they keep your tension. They keep the tension rather. Um, I'm going to do a bit of chest. Chest flies, cable crossovers, whatever you want to call them. I'll show you how it works anyway. Alright, so you want to come down, stand right in the middle, nice and balanced. Always be balanced. Alright, you're going to come down like this, squeeze your chest, squeeze the muscle, and then back up. So you keep the tension. Come down, squeeze, and back up. What you see is a lot of people with this too heavy, with their arms bent like this, doing this. That is not right. If you keep your arms just slightly bent, keep them mostly straight, and just come down and you're squeezing your chest. It's a chest exercise, not a front shoulder exercise. All right, while I'm here, um, I'll show you some pull-ups, some wide grip pull-ups. Wide grip are good. 
it's good for your lats. Most people want to train there when they get their lats. It looks good. All right, this is how I'm going to show you something. Nice and wide. You put up, and back down. Okay, diets, we're gonna talk about diets real quick. People always ask me, how do I lose fat? How do I get rid of the belly? Number one thing I say to them is go to the gym. But anyway, apart from that, best thing to do if you wanna lose, lose fat is to keep the gaps in between your meals really small. So you eat every two and a half, three hours, four hours. If you take longer than three, four hours in between your, in between your meals, your body, you're gonna encourage your body to store fat. You're gonna make your body catabolic. So it's gonna hold on to every bit of food it gets and it's gonna store it all as fat. So the best thing to do is wake up early in the morning. You have your porridge, I have porridge every morning. Have your porridge and make sure two and a half hours later you eat something like a sandwich or an apple or yogurt, anything. Just keep eating all the way through the day, small and often. That's, that's to keep the fat down. And go to the gym, burn calories. Burn calories like mad. Go all out in the gym, do as much as you can. Don't worry about all this overtraining stuff, just train. When you feel, when, you, when you're tired, you're gonna, you're gonna stop, <laughs> yeah? But the main thing is your diet is the most important thing, so you just gotta eat regularly. Eat as healthy as you can, eat as clean as you can. I don't eat clean all the time, sometimes I do, but you know, I burn it off, so it doesn't matter. Just eat, the main thing is just eating. Don't leave no gaps in between your meals. That's the most important thing. All right guys, thanks for watching my little workout. Um, my name's Cyrus. Thanks for watching the Result Friends Talk Show. Keep watching and I'll see you guys next time.